Hey, welcome back. So uh, in our last video, we completed my program counter on a breadboard. And uh, in this one, I'm going to want to transfer this to a perf board. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so in order to transfer this to a perf board, uh, this is the one I will be using. Uh, it says it's uh, 54 by 27. Um, copper on one side, this is the uh, perforated holes, so none of them are connected, so they're all just individual dots. Now, I've spent so many hours agonizing over how I want this to look. Um, I even went on to Easy EDA and built a schematic. Uh, and you can see my, my issue is that there are just so many wires. With, with a breadboard, you can make a mess of wires and it's kind of okay. Uh, with a perf board, you want to try to minimize as much as you can the uh, crossing of wires and, and the mess it's going to make. So um, let's, what I like to do is kind of lay it out beforehand. So I've, this gives me an idea of what I'm going to be working towards, um, but let's actually lay it out with the, the components first and then start planning this out. So let's do that. So I have all the components uh, laid out here from the EZD tool. So I have my IC headers, so let's place those in the middle, that's easy. dip switch on this side because the bus will be on here on this side so now I'm gonna have a, a bus in and um, a bus out so one that's gonna connect to the bus and one that's gonna head to the instruction register so uh, the way this is gonna be oriented it's gonna be least significant bit here and these will be the two um, uh, register uh, counters and this will be the two selectors so I will be loading in from this side and outputting to this side I think I want to output low and have the LEDs uh, on between the the output pins to the instruction register and the uh, other the um, selector pins. So I'm not even worried about where it's going to output yet. I'm just going to try to fit these in. Okay, looks like it could work. I'm um, also going to want to have my switch uh, up here, give or take. And I also have a uh, RGB LED that I'll use for green-red to uh, indicate whether it's in run mode or um, program mode. I'll just snip off the blue LED. I don't need that one. Okay, that should work. Uh, I don't need a resistor between there because there will be direct current. So that should be somewhat what my layout's going to look like. No, I'm missing a couple of pieces. No, I need, yeah. I'm going to need my uh, clock and clear line. I'm going to need a load line as well. So this will be my load instruction from the uh, instruction register. And then clock and clear in here, output, input, and then I gotta connect all of these. So I'm gonna have bit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, coming into these selectors as, it doesn't really matter, so just to be consistent, or inconsistent this time, I guess, but more convenient, I'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, all right, now for the soldering. Now, before we start any soldering, it's important to have proper ventilation, but more importantly is an ice cold glass of homebrew beer. So this is a IPA I made myself out of rye, and this will help me get through all the soldering. So, cheers. All right, so now I'm gonna start laying out the underside to see how I can run these traces. Okay, now it's time for some planning. As you can see, this is a jumbled mess and this does not need to be. So uh, even on my easy EDA sketch, you can see there's a lot of crossing wires, which is not ideal because this is a one-sided plane. But because I'm doing this the way I want to do it, I'm going to actually make this a two-sided plane. So I'm going to use the top and the bottom, but I'm going to keep the top focused on aesthetics if I can. So 
silver copper wire straight lines no windy no crossing just nice clean lines so for anything in this description that seems pretty clean uh, I think I'm going to do it on the top and all the dirty stuff I'll do on the bottom so obvious ones are the bus in because that's just one two three four five six seven eight that look pretty cool like a, like a wave out um, I'm also going to need uh, the lower bits right so I'm gonna do one two three four five six seven eight so one two seven eight can go across here and same with the dip switches um, I can make some silver copper lines out of here into these which would be pretty cool looking uh, so at least start with that I generally like to do the power and ground at the end I know a lot of people like to do it in the beginning but uh, as you can see you know we got the 5 volt coming across the whole way here and the ground same thing needs to be everywhere so I just like to do red and black um, insulated wire for that because it's just so hard to plan otherwise so that's where I'm gonna go with and uh, I'm sorry if it's not the most efficient way but it's the way I find best so I'm gonna do as many in the top plane as I can first then simple ones on the bottom plane and then I will use some jump wires where necessary so let's get the fan on let's get some soldering done let's have some fun but much more importantly to all you out there it's Friday night cheers okay now that we have this top part looking pretty good um, let's flip it over and start soldering permanently the rest of these and then start getting these wires bent over and soldered together so let the soldering begin okay got it all set up in my helping hands now uh, what I want to do is finish soldering the items that we started soldering in the corners finish them all up and then you can see I bent over all these ends I can just use those to connect uh, a lot of the various pieces so not the LEDs just yet but a lot of the items I bent over I can actually connect to where I want them to be connected to so Okay, so uh, I'm not done yet, but I want to stop now and just take some continuity tests to see if I've bridged anything before I keep finishing up. So let's start. Um, do the simple ones, let's do the side by side. So yeah, beep is bad. So if any of these are touching underneath, well, that's me touching. Side by sides are the most common to get bridged. No, and so all of these should be okay. So bit one, bit two, bit three, bit four, yep. Bit five, bit six, bit seven, bit eight. Cool, those don't work. All right, so I got both the clocks hooked up and one of the clears. I need to jump the other clear though because of the, uh, that one is uh, blocked in, so. I'll jump that one right now. I'm going to hook up my ground to this little guy here. And put this on top. And I have my power attached to uh, a 300 ohm resistor. I should be able to touch the outputs of each of the 74L's 163's which would light the LED in theory at least so no I can't touch these because it's the selector output I need to touch silly so uh, that's one here two three four okay uh, one two three four all right well that works well huh first try okay so now time for the switch now these switches have six pins which you can see here these three all tie together and these three all tie together but the top and bottom have nothing to do with each other so these have no continuity with each other whatsoever but this pin and this pin are kind of like a common pin so this top upper right one will either be connected or disconnected to the second or the other two pins. So in this situation, the middle pin and the right pin are set up. If I flip the switch, the outer pins will be there, and not the inner. So same in the bottom. In this situation, the outer will be connected and the inner won't. So these 
the upper right and bottom left is like your common pin and the other two switch back and forth so for my purposes I'm gonna have two things I'm gonna have my LED up here and my select so I'm gonna tie these two select lines to the common pin uh, so to this right pin over here I know it's not common but I don't need a common so it's either gonna be on or off so I connect both of them to this one and then ground to this one so that will either pull the select pin ground to ground or it will leave it floating which on this chip is default high on the top side I'm going to tie 5 volts to the upper right pin which is that common one I, I spoke about and I'm gonna tie this um, anode to uh, the middle pin and this anode to the left pin and I'm going to tie the common pin here to the resistor I have and the resistor to ground so that should make it so that this will flip back and forth between two colors and the bottom one will either be grounded or not grounded. So let's get some soldering done. Okay, so the first test is the easy one. I will just uh, plug it in and it should, all that should happen to have the chips in yet is the LED should come on and I should be able to change the color of the LED. So let's see if I got that part right. What, red, green, nice, okay. Green is much better than red, but that's because I'm using the same resistor for both. Well, I should be using different ones, but I'm not. So, good. That works. Okay, uh, let me get the chips in and see what happens when I do that. Put the ground in. I'm going to put this in. It should at least turn the light on. All right, good. And the clock's still going, so that's a good sign. Um, and can I move these? Yes, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, cool. All those work. Cool. Okay. Uh, if I switch though, okay, I haven't plugged anything in yet. So let me plug in the uh, the clock we said was on the was on the left. So that is. Yeah, this is the clock. Then I can take the jump low, or sorry, high, and the clear high. Oh no, is that counting? Is that actually counting? Let's speed the clock up a bit. Oh my gosh. That is such a relief. Come on, go all the way up, just do it. First try, well, not really first try. <laughs> no one's gonna give me credit for that, I suppose. Whew, that was an adventure. So at least the counting and the dip switches work. Now I'll have to try the loading at some point. Okay, so all I've done is just taken one extra line and put it into the load. Uh, turn the clock back on. Now, let's see, the load bit is this jump one. So, if I take this high, uh, from high to low, cool, there, that one bit is there. So, if I move it over one, nice, that works. One more, yep, yes, it is working. It is absolutely working. We try a clear. So if I put to the clock off and pull that down and pulse. And now if I pull clear low now and clock pulse, clears. Yes. Now I go back. Pulse. Perfect. All right. It looks like we have a functioning program counter. That was a very long effort. So I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I, I learned a ton on this. It was challenging. I hope this was the hardest one, but I doubt it. Um, had a lot of issues. I hope you learned something from my trials and tribulations. Uh, in my next video, I'll be doing a register. Uh, I've actually already started it uh, in the bus, so I have those two coming in the next few videos. So hope to see you then, and uh, leave a comment below. Thanks.